whilst Downing Street will become its second female Prime Minister, some women are being cut out of the political process altogether thanks to a technicality. Fiona Foster has gone to find out why. You need your shoe on, don't you? Mahala Osborne and her two-year-old son Mackay have a big morning ahead of them. We need to go and vote. Mahala's heading to the polling station to vote in the EU referendum. Down this way? While many of us take voting for granted, for Mahala, it's a big step forwards. When Mahala escaped domestic abuse and fled to a safe house, like the rest of the women there, she had to keep her new address a secret for her own protection. So she didn't go on the electoral roll and as a result, she lost her right to vote. <laughs> Official figures show at least one in four women across Britain has experienced domestic violence. As the electoral roll is publicly accessible, women who leave abusive partners and move into refuges are advised not to register their new addresses. Now, after almost a year in a safe house, Mahala says she's no longer at risk and has invited us to her new home. Come in. I've always been someone that voted, so the local elections for me were really important. The thought of not being able to vote was really quite upsetting to me. The day everyone went to vote, I cried. I was, I was sad. It really meant that much to yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. There are provisions for people at risk to register anonymously, but Mahala says it's almost impossible to qualify as it requires legal documents. I had reported to the police once but didn't press charges, which is the case for an awful lot of people who suffer domestic abuse. And a lot of people flee having never told anyone else. So not having the evidence meant I couldn't be signed off, which meant I couldn't register anonymously. Without legal documentation, a supporting letter from a senior public official will be considered. But that's even tougher. This is the current form. Here is the evidence request that you need to have. A police officer or above the rank of superintendent of any police force. Director General of the Security Services of the National Crime Agency. That's a big ask, I suspect. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, Director of Adult Social Services or Children's Services in England. These people are so high up that it's almost impossible for everyday people to contact um, these people. In a refuge across town, I'm meeting a woman who, after six months in the safe house, is getting used to living without a vote. Having already given up her home and everything in it, she feels it's unfair she's also lost the right to have her vote counted. It felt like some of my rights had been removed from me because I'd like to make my own decision, not have someone else making the decision on my behalf. It's very important because if other people make the decision for me and I feel they didn't do the right thing, I'd be gutted. For Mahala, there's a simple solution. She's calling on the Electoral Commission to add refuge managers to the list of public officials able to sign letters of anonymity. And how's the campaign going so far? Superbly well, getting an awful lot of support. At the moment, the petition is almost at 20,000 signatures. Polly Neat of Women's Aid says something has to change for the thousands of women currently living in refuges in the UK. It needs to be much more straightforward for women fleeing domestic abuse to obtain anonymous registration. Basically, they should be given it on the word of somebody providing specialist support, a specialist domestic abuse service, like a refuge, but it might be an outreach service, it might be support in the community. I think someone's more keen to vote than I am. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, Mahala was looking forward to joining the rest of us at the polling booths for the EU referendum. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited to be voting today. Yeah. We did it, yes. Very straightforward, exactly how it should be. Yeah, perfect. I feel quite liberated and, and empowered that I, I do have my say again and that my life has restarted. It's a little personal victory for me that I've actually had my vote. So, yeah, feeling very happy.
they've been through enough to lose the right to vote then Absolutely. just to see right does it and the electoral commission has uh, been in touch to say that they would welcome any of your feedback from Mahala and Polly to see if uh, they can change the system